Today, we're going to bring an end to the First World War and talk about some of those immediate consequences following the war. Now, first of all, uh, we want to remember that the war ends in 1918. Enthusiasm for the war has long been gone. Remember that war that they thought was going to be over by Christmas in 1914? Now we're into the fourth year of the war. The Russian Revolution removed Russia from the Eastern Front um, with the official signing of the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk in March of 1918. The United States had entered the war back in April of 1917, but by 1918, American forces are entering the continent and American munitions and arms are making their way into the Allies in greater numbers than ever before. The German Spring Offensive had failed uh, to break through Western lines. And so the German defeat seemed inevitable, and they were looking in hopes to get a treaty based on Woodrow Wilson's 14 points, which was relatively lenient to the Germans. An armistice would finally come on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, an official ceasefire in the war. Now, this war is the most deadly conflict in human history to this point. And really, it can be argued that it, it is just a it, Second World War is going to be a continuation of the uh, of what started with this First World War. Over 40 million casualties, including 10 million war dead and 10 million civilian deaths. Social consequences of the First World War, the tremendous loss of life, especially men in the prime years of their lives, declining birth rates in the aftermath of the war. We do see a rise in the status of women, so many women um, in, in nations like Britain that had entered the workforce to allow factories to operate while so many men were at the front. Um, this is going to contribute to voting rights being gained in places like Britain and the United States in the immediate aftermath of the First World War. Though these gains for women would be short-lived uh, for many. Economic consequences following the First World War, tremendous costs to all the belligerents. The United States, though, is going to walk away pretty strong as many of the allied nations will be indebted to the United States who financed much of their war. So they're going to get some loans paid back with, with interest. Germany is going to experience a bout of hyperinflation in the years after the war, as they will attempt to pay some of the reparations that we're going to talk about in a moment with just printing new German paper marks. Uh, farmland is going to be destroyed, especially in the Western Front in northeastern France and in Belgium. Uh, industries will be destroyed in that region. Um, so we see decline both in agricultural and industrial production in the immediate aftermath of the war. And we do see the rise of the United States as an international economic superpower. Got a lot of political consequences following the end of World War I. Britain and France are going to remain politically stable. They won the war. But we will see um, increased roles within their central governments. Um, one aspect is a, is a rise in uh, universal health care as those governments had to pump in so much of their resources to just take care of these soldiers that had come back from the war um, with their, their injuries. Uh, we see the loss of empires. The German Empire is gone. The Russian Empire is gone with the Russian Revolution. We see a collapse in Austria-Hungary. We see a collapse of the Ottoman Empire. Following the war, we uh, the armistice, remember, is just a ceasefire. November of 1918 is just an agreement to stop shooting at each other so they can get to working on a treaty. And that comes uh, in Paris starting in 1919, in January of 1919, what is known as the Paris Peace Conference, a, a set of meetings that will last uh, for the next year where the victorious powers will work out treaties with the losers of the war um, to craft what the world is going to look like in the aftermath. This is led by the big four, France, Britain, the United States, and Italy, but really Italy is a smaller player of those four. And the Paris Peace Conference will result in a number of treaties with all of the defeated nations. We care most about the Treaty of Versailles here, but there's also the Treaty of Saint-Germain uh, with Austria, the Treaty of Trianon with Hungary, the Treaty of Sevres with, uh, with Turkey. Uh, so, so this 
defeated, the, the countries that lost World War I are going to have no say in the outcome of these treaties. And that's going to be an important story as we get closer to the Second World War. So what does the Treaty of Versailles actually do? Uh, it, it's punishing to Germany. Germany will lose their empire. So all of their overseas holdings in Africa and East Asia, gone. Germany will lose territory on their periphery. So lands around the nation of Germany will be lost, some to create a nation of Poland and some to given to Denmark, Alsace and Lorraine given back to France. Germany's losing land all around their nation. Germany is going to be demilitarized. Their army is going to be shrunk to only a 100,000 man force, which is quite small, especially for an inland uh, nation like Germany. They're going to be allowed no air force, no Luftwaffe, or no navy. They're going to have to sign what is called the War Guilt Clause, essentially accepting blame for the entirety of this war, which can then make them responsible for paying reparations. And they will have to pay punitive reparations, particularly to, to Belgium and France, to the tune of 132 billion gold marks, um, or the equivalent today of $270 billion. Other outcomes of these treaties uh, include the creation of the League of Nations. This was actually a part of the Treaty of Versailles, and that's going to be meant to settle disputes between nations so we don't ever get to another war like this. I know, you, you know that's not going to work very well. Uh, so the goal is to provide collective security if many nations of the world can join together to, to stop aggressive nations before they invade other countries. Um, that could make the world a safer place and avoid future conflicts. We're going to see the creation of new states. Austria and Hungary will now be two independent nations. Poland. Czechoslovakia, South Slavia, Yugoslavia will be created, and an independent Turkish nation separate now from the old Ottoman Empire. The Baltic states and Ukraine will gain independence um, following the end of this war. And then finally, the mandate system uh, will be developed for the colonial holdings of Germany and the Arab lands uh, of the Middle East that the Ottoman Empire had held, where Britain and France will take control of those territories, not technically as colonies, but as League of Nations mandates. Like you take care of these countries, these regions, until they can stand on their own as independent nations. But for all intents and purposes, they basically became colonies of the British and French. And we'll be back in, in a few days as we start to get into our move to global war. Take care.